Hello and welcome to episode 42 of the Physique Development Podcast, a podcast bringing you structured Q&As, deep dives on single topics, and inside looks at our team. In today's episode, we're going to be going over four methods for returning back to the gym after an injury. Something that I think we're all very familiar with is injuring ourselves to some degree in our training careers. And one of the most common ways of re-injuring ourselves or worsening a condition is doing too much too soon when returning back to the gym. The ability to restore range of motion, function, and overall strength and performance to a joint or muscle is going to depend on our ability to remain patient, strategic, and listening to our body during the recovery process. So when returning back to strength training after an injury, there are several strategies we can have at our disposal to ensure that we can start training and rebuilding our strength and performance safely. So first off, I just want to mention the disclaimer that I'm not a doctor and that you should seek qualified medical guidance to address the situation appropriately if need be. All right. So housekeeping out of the way here, we're going to go over these four methods for returning back to the gym after injury. Number one, modify your programming. Okay. You can make tweaks to your training programs by reducing training volume and training intensity on the affected or injured area. You can ensure that you adjust potential variables, the training load, the amount of training volume, frequency, and are not making the condition or discomfort worse by overloading or overusing that joint or muscle. If you're avoiding volume and intensity on a specific muscle group or joint, you can continue to train as normal with other muscles and joints. That makes sense, right? So for example, if dealing with a biceps injury, you could continue to train your lower body as long as it does, does not directly affect your recovery of your biceps, for example. Okay, so modifying our programming can definitely help. Okay, so if, again, we have an upper body injury, we can modify our programming to, to better adapt to working around that injury. And, and this is something I'm actually working on uh, with one of my clients right now. And she just went through uh, shoulder surgery and her physician, uh, physiotherapist has has released her to do lower body training and some core based training. Okay. So what we're doing is modifying her programming to work around those shoulders while they recover. Okay. So that's number one, modifying your program seems simple. Okay. But it's one of those things that may not come to mind. Uh, if you are out of the gym, especially if you're not, if you're not a coach or trainer yourself, uh, you could sort of have a doom and gloom outlook on being injured. But what I will say is someone has gone through injuries uh, myself and has dealt with injuries with uh, coaching clients over the years, you can modify that programming to work around that injury. So do so. And if you need help with that, we can help or I will steer you to our website, physiquedevelopment.com. And there are some articles on there. Uh, one in particular is how to return back to the gym after a long layoff. Um, and that is very helpful as far as making adjustments if you either haven't been in the gym for a while and or are working back slowly from an injury. Okay, so that's number one, modify your program. Number two is adjust your positioning. Okay, so after we have modified that programming, we have gotten to a point where we can either use that joint, use that muscle a little bit more um, frequently and or that programming didn't need to be altered as significantly and we can at least train that area, we can start to adjust our positioning. So here you can implement variations of an exercise or positional adjustments to work around any discomfort you may be experiencing within that joint or muscle group. And I would suggest using cables or machines whenever possible to ensure that your training environment is safe and your range of motion is limited within a range of motion that you're comfortable with, right? So altering that range of motion in any given exercise can help train a specific area while also working around injury or discomfort. For example, suppose you still experience pain or discomfort in your knee through a full range of motion when performing a leg extension, let's say. In that case, you can adjust the range of motion to train in a range where there is no discomfort, such as the upper two thirds of a leg extension, right? So the bottom third of a leg extension is going to be the most vulnerable, uh, especially for your knee, right? We don't have any opposing force uh, for that calf um, and those muscles that help 
sort of stabilize that, that lower leg um, and the bottom third of that movement, right? So that can be the most vulnerable part of a leg extension exercise, especially for your knee, right? So if you're rehabbing a knee and you want something that you can do, or let's say the upper two thirds of that range of motion feel good, just know that there's validity in adjusting your positioning and range of motion during the exercise, right? So again, if you're, ex if you're experiencing any pain or discomfort in that knee full through that full range of motion, you can adjust that range of motion to train where there is no discomfort, right? And in those upper two thirds, I've experienced myself and in, in that uh, I've experienced through client programming that the upper two thirds of that leg extension can be a little bit more comfortable to work through. And again, at a lower load or a lighter weight, right? So as we're, as we're working back from an injury, we're not as worried about pushing that intensity or load as much as we're just looking to put some tension on that muscle group and go ahead and, and, and work through um, slowly that pain and discomfort that we're, we're feeling there and just be able to train that joint at all, right? Because one of the biggest things about rehab is, again, at a certain stage, is going to be getting back to the groove of things, getting that, getting that range of motion back within that joint, right? And, and tweaking that uh, position or tweaking that range of motion can definitely help. And number two, bleeds right into number three, which is going to be tweak the tempo. Altering that rep tempo, the time spent within the eccentric and concentric phases, sort of the lowering and raising phases of a movement can allow you to work around an injured muscle or tendon related discomfort. Okay, so expanding on the leg extension example that we previously had gone over, Suppose you cannot heavily load the exercise due to that joint discomfort, right, at the knee. In that case, you can alter your rep tempo to increase the amount of time that the quads are under tension, right, and still allow adequate stimulus to that muscle group, right? So by only going through that upper two thirds and by tweaking our repetition tempo, we can go through a appropriate range of motion that doesn't give us discomfort, we can still place the quads under tension and still allow for an adequate stimulus. Win-win. For example, you could start to insert a pause at the top of the exercise while continuously maintaining tension on contracting the quads. Let's say for a two count or a three count or a four count even, depending on how light the load is and how that joint feels and how that muscle feels as you're going through that movement. Likewise, you could increase the time under tension with the eccentric by extending the time of the lowering portion, right? Um, so while staying in that upper two thirds of that movement, we could either put a pause at the top, squeezing that muscle where we feel confident and in control of that movement and of that load, but we could also slowly lower that load through the eccentric portion of that range while also extending the time under tension and the stimulus put toward that muscle group. Okay. Number four, the final one, focus on the local. Choose an exercise that localizes a given muscle group or joint. For example, if you have a knee, if you have knee pain, you could continue to train the quads by performing leg extensions instead of barbell back squats, for example, and adjusting the rep tempo. Again, so sticking with the leg extension, leg extension example here, let's say for training your quads, you typically do a barbell back squat, you typically do a leg press or a hack squat or, or one of those variations that are a little bit more multi-joint compound uh, that get a lot of tissue involved, but they also put a lot of stress and strain on that injured area. With this podcast example, we're sticking with that knee, right? So let's say that knee is injured and squatting hurts, right? It brings us a lot of discomfort. We could choose that leg extension to still place some stimulus on that local tissue, which is the quadriceps, right? And we can also do this with breaking down the muscle groups that the barbell back squat trains and choosing other exercises that don't bring the knee as much discomfort with more isolation-based exercises, right? So 
The barbell back squat places a lot of tension on the glutes and quads, you know, a little bit on the hamstrings for supporting, uh, supporting role and the calves as a supporting role as well, right? So we can break those muscle groups down and just do isolation movements that work around that knee, work around that discomfort and focus on the local tissues that that larger exercise or that more compound based exercises, more compound based <laughs> exercise trains right? So we can focus on the local with things like leg extensions for the quads, things like a glute bridge or hip thrust, uh, with limited range of motion for the glutes, uh, a standing or seated, uh, calf raise and a seated or lying leg curl, for example. And there we have it. We trained all those muscle groups that movements that are larger within the range of motion and place more stress on the knee, like a back squat or a hack squat or a leg press or something like that. And we, we can replace that one movement with a few others that can focus on the local tissues while still working around that pain or discomfort that we're experiencing in the knee, for example. Okay, so to put it all together here, don't rush for recovery. There's a psychological component to returning back from an injury and depending on the severity of the injury, it's worth building confidence in performing an exercise before returning to your previous training loads or performance levels. Again, do not rush your recovery. And the old adage of no pain, no gain does not actually apply here to this process. If you're in any discomfort, utilize training adaptations or medication or seek qualified medical guidance to address the situation appropriately. As I mentioned in the beginning, I'm not a doctor. And if you are experiencing this pain and it does seem to be going away, and you either tried all the methods that I've mentioned in today's episode uh, before and they aren't helping, do seek qualified medical guidance, again, to address the situation appropriately. Let's recap really quick those four methods. Number one was modify your programming, right? Make tweaks to that training programming by reducing the training volume or the training intensity to that affected area right? By, you, know, you can adjust the training load, the amount of reps or sets that you're doing, and the frequency at which you're training that affected area. Okay. And we want to be sure that that condition is not becoming worse and that discomfort is not becoming worse by overloading or overusing that joint. Okay. Number two was adjust your positioning. So here, this was implementing the altered range of motion or adjusting our positioning within our body to help bring more relief to that discomfort or to that injured area. And this example that we used, that we continue to use throughout, was that leg extension example, right? Using that upper two thirds of the leg extension and avoiding the third at the bottom that gives us discomfort, for example. Number three was tweaking the tempo, right? So we're building on number two of adjusting our positioning or range of motion. And in number three, we were tweaking the tempo, right? We're gonna alter that rep tempo to uh, also accentuate more tension and more stimulus to that muscle group we're trying to train and work around that injured or discomfort joint. Number four was then focus on the local, right? Breaking down the muscle groups that that larger exercise trains, right? So like we use the example of the back squat here, right? So utilizing smaller, more isolated movements, like a leg extension, leg curl, glute bridge, seated calf raise, things like that, that can take a lot of stress off that knee joint uh, and place it on the muscles that we're trying to train. Again, don't rush that recovery, stay in the gym. And as I always say, live to train another day. This is a short one today solo podcast. And these, they, we're trying to keep these solo podcasts a little shorter, a little bit more actionable uh, to leave room for the longer episodes with the rest of the team. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you want to dive more into these specific topics and methods, uh, you can go buy my book, Science of Strength Training. You can check out the links in the show notes or description to learn more and or check out our website, physiquedevelopment.com. And I'll mention that one more time in the sign off. Thanks so much for listening, guys. See you next time.